Lunch Money Lambert, Jeff Malott. Welcome to the Kai Class Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malat, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kai Bass Nation. Welcome to the Hey. Welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Bass Nation. Yo. Okay. What's up? Okay. We, we did are. it. We made it, Ryan. Back again. Back again. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to KBN Live. Happy Monday night to you all. Looking snazzy, Ryan, with your half head. On yeah, don't, don't. Uh, this is how good our camo hats work. Virtual mm-hmm. backgrounds won't even pick them up. So John Cena, you can't see Ryan. Yeah. You can't see, can't see him. How you doing tonight, my friend? I'm all right, man. I'm hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit, brother. Yeah. Good to see you later this week. A little Kentucky Lake action. We're going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to stay tuned up or tuned down for it i don't know which one yeah so we got a big show tonight y'all we've got uh steve owens of course from bassmaster we're going to have a little update with steve about what's gone on so far his thoughts on the rest of the year and and just and maybe talk a little dugout stuff too with steve so it's gonna be fun with steve and then jay wallen in the second half of the show talking about jay wallen kentucky lake that guy yeah if you've ever seen any of those hobie shows from uh, kentucky lake that air on on some of the different TV channels, you see Jay front and center on a lot of those. My man, that's him. He can catch him on the K- Kentucky Lake, so he'll be on to preview that. It's gonna be good. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear about it. Yeah, I saw a photograph of a of a lovely smallmouth bass earlier from Kentucky Lake. So yeah, yeah, I think Jay was there today. Actually, boy, his- man, it's tough being a pro, you know. Mm-hmm. Be out there, mm-hmm. on the boy. Uh, as always, before we we get started, we'd like to talk a little bit about the, the news of the week and stuff like that. And, and of course, uh, mention our sponsors. We'll get to all that here in just a second. Um, but yeah, a few things happened over, over the last week, I guess, Ryan, mm-hmm. number one on the page, there was some back and forth with the North tech North. I can't get all the initials out. Any tech, any G K F L M B T X. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was kind of in line with the Keith Poche thing. Because it was on, I think it had to do with the same area of mm-hmm. the same lake. Um, Ironically enough, what do you know yes. about that? What do you know about that? Anything? Uh, well, I don't know. So, I mean, going through just trying to trying to put together the pieces of what people were saying, uh, I guess they made some rule changes, like the week of that, basically allowed all launches and may or may not have allowed portaging. <laughs> That was the question because you have to slide over this like big concrete dam. If y'all haven't seen the Keith Poche video of him jumping it in his Gator Tracks boat, you're missing out on life because that was pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, that created some controversy, I guess, because they felt like there were some rule changes to allow this one honey hole to be able to be fished. And they said it was because of all of the Bassmaster pressure on the lake, which they were like 10 boats that day. So um, there were a lot of inconsistencies. And I think some guys kind of spoke out about that uh, on our page and on their page. And of course, in true, you know, silence the silence the voices fashion, uh, they banned them and blocked them because why would you put up with somebody having an opinion in your club? Uh, and then the club folded. So 
<laughs> yeah, I think at first the wrong John Allen got banned, and then the other John, <laughs> then the other John Allen spoke up, and he got banned too, just for the hell of it, I guess. And now both Johns, all Johns are banned. Who, who's the right and who's the wrong John Allen? That's know. the real question. I didn't even know there were two. I told them on the post that I thought they, that he was talking to himself for a minute. I didn't know what because they kept replying to each other, and I thought it's like is, Cliff and Clifton Allen. Yeah, it's like what's happening here. But uh, yeah. they got it straightened out. And then the craziest part of that, which I've seen, you know, this kind of craziness happened to other clubs it's not like a new thing but within a week they shut down operations it wasn't just man, usually it takes years it. usually takes yeah. years for that you know it usually takes years but that, that was that was it my man said enough's enough washed his hands of it and it looks like they're done <sighs> that's crazy that is crazy man you ever seen one happen that fast where they just said no no it was like, beautiful i wish it happened a lot faster to be honest <laughs> with you that's great yeah so they're done i don't know instant results but i know texas is not short on leagues to fish i know duke's got his chris morales has his there's plenty of options down there so they can they may have for to sure they, i mean there's there's plenty of options for the anglers i think i think the biggest thing is you just have to you know you got to run it right i think you know that applies across the country i don't think it's just texas or just this club like if you treat people fairly and you have to be a, as a director and steve-o can speak to this when he gets on here you have to be able to receive and respond to criticism and input from people like that's how you grow you don't you can't just tell them to shut up and and pretend like things never happen yeah as a as a former td if you ever if you're someone out there that's thinking about getting into that game be you know you got to have thick skin just know that going in you, you can't it's not for the faint of heart you can't go in there worried about everybody liking you you can't worry about making everybody happy you just gotta just know what the right thing is do the right thing move on pretty simple yep agreed yeah uh, anything else we want to talk about before we get to the one? Is there anything we missed? What else went on? Went on? Uh, we've got a little issue we're going to talk about with a with a yep. pseudo DQ, but we're going to talk to Steve about that when he gets on because he knows some more details. Um, I'm trying to think if anything else has popped off here. We have any big, any other big events that happened over the weekend? It was Mother's no. Day weekend, so I feel yeah, like it was Mother's Day quiet. weekend. Everybody throttled back. I hope happy Mother's Day to all the all the moms out there That's in right. KBN land. That's right. We got we got quite a few. A few new moms, a few moms have been around a bit, but happy Mother's Day to all of you. Oh, so, yeah. There we go. Uh, we're doing the giveaway. If you saw the announcement uh, underneath when the when the intro was playing, we're doing a Seagar giveaway tonight. So we'll throw that on the screen real quick. You guys know the thing. Like, share on Facebook, comment, like on YouTube. I don't even know how it would all work on Twitch and all mm -hmm. that. So do your best over there. We're getting, we're getting too big for our britches, Jeff. Yeah, Twitch we and Rumble and, and all that. I don't even... We've got uh, zero watchers on Twitch right now, so it doesn't matter on Twitch, <laughs> Ryan. So, uh, what is it? What is a Twitch? I'm not. I think it's where all the gamers right. hang out, but okay. I'm trying to tap into the gamer crowd. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we right. need to get special chairs? Those like motocross or whatever. Kind of got the, chairs or the something. gamer stuff back here behind us. Cool. Yeah. Rand Randy Creason said it looked like a political debate with your red and my blue, which well, kind of hurt. We know hurt who's going to win this year, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just kidding guys yeah, don't yeah. everybody get all upset Dan. yeah yeah so we'll do it we'll do the cigar giveaway just like and share on facebook like and comment on youtube just say something if you're watching on one of the other platforms uh, but shows presented by dugout bait and tackle we may touch on with steve about some of the stuff going on at dugout some of the new stuff they've got going on uh pro guide lithium we're still trying to track them down to get them on here to talk lithium batteries uh <laughs> I'm gonna text Matt and get us a new contact. I feel like that dude just gave well, me a fake number. Well, the the card that I was given says owner underneath his name, so maybe he's too important to too uh, important for sure. Yeah. Mess with me, yeah, yeah. We'll get like a janitor. How about yeah, that? Yeah. Those Steve Fields. You, those are the guys you want to talk to. Yeah. So Pro God Lithium, we appreciate them. Uh, Bangtail Whiskey, of course. Get a bottle of whiskey there in your hand. What you got there, right? Oh, that was a, I, that was not a bottle of whiskey. I wish Bud, it was. Bud Light. I there? wish it was. Oh, Brandon Bing will be in town tomorrow. We're gonna have lunch. Uh, have lunch tomorrow. All right. And Discuss then some things. Our giveaways, like tonight's Seagar, Z-Man, Revo, Gil. We appreciate all their support as well. Uh, couldn't do the show without sponsors and without y'all watching. So, Amen. Makes it a lot more fun. A lot more fun. With that said, what do you say? You want to get the man in here? Let's do it. Let's Steve do it. Steve-O. Let's wrestle him down. Here. All right. Steve-O, what's up, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Can we get a big holler like you did on stage at the classic? <laughs> can you say can't Rocky, do that here. Rocky no. Top by chance? <laughs> yeah, I'm not in my own house. I can't. No. Can't hey, do that. Come okay. on, brother. No. no. No, I'll do it for a stage president or on a strip up there, but I can't do it in my own house. So. Whatever. Yeah. That'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's going on, yeah. buddy? Uh, 
first of all, we just talked about Dugout being the presenting sponsor of the show. You got any Dugout updates for us? Anything new slide in over there? Uh, we still just, you know, slinging plastic and baits and uh, just, you know, continue to look <laughs> at dugoutfishing.com. Uh, we update that as much as we can. It's hard because we get so much foot traffic through high volume. It's just as, as soon as you put 15 spinner baits on there, you sold 11 that day. And it's just, it's very hard to do on that, but uh, just still rigging like crazy. Uh, Old Town's getting a little traction down there. You know, we, we're, we're, we're part of, Atlanta kayak company down there on Lake Lanier is old town and Hobie dealer as well. So uh, just trying to get that moving uh, along with the Jackson stuff that we've got, but um, getting a lot more people just coming in with those other two brands in particular, other than Hobie that we're not used to uh, rigging because we've been a Hobie shop for so long and Jamie's getting in there and figuring that stuff out and it's coming up some pretty cool stuff. So I'd like to publicize that as much as I could, but it's hard to because as soon as you put it out there, somebody else copies it and you, it's gone. So you gotta you gotta squeeze whatever customers you can with that little bit of secrecy for as long as you can. But um, do just, the wires uh, get caught up around the uh, propeller at all on the old town? Or <laughs> able to, it was either to propeller work or, or, or foot grips. I was trying to pick which one you were going to throw out there. First. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. No, but, uh, yeah, just just continuing to do that, and you know we're a big uh, uh, pure fishing Berkeley dealer, Lou Shimano Daiwa. We've just got a huge Daiwa load in. So if you're any gearheads, if you don't see it, give us a shout because we probably got it. Uh, it's just sitting there waiting to be uploaded because, like I just mentioned, and you all that have been down there see it's you got to live on roller skates to get down there. You get ran over. It's pretty busy. So how uh, but, how them Chad Chads looking? Uh, there's some stashed. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, well, wait a minute. <laughs> so, uh, man can drive through and, and probably, probably, you know, give Jamie a pat on the back and get one or two, but they're, they're pretty thin. They're very thin. So. Oh man. I think that that is the craziest thing. P that FOMO people that don't even throw swim baits never have in their life are just buying those when they see them. I swear. Oh yeah. Just because the scarcity, you know, it's kind of like entry fees last year. They're just buying them for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I terrible. think when, when six cents came out with their glide and, you know, Carl Jacobson's big user of the storm glide bait and people started seeing that these 40 to 50, $60 swim baits are producing. Then they, they don't have to buy a Roman mother or whatever they call it, you know, for $455,000. Or so. Them old hinkles. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but they're a uh, good quality stuff. Well, the main reason we had you on tonight, Steve, of course, is to talk Bassmaster. Uh, year one under your leadership, it's been nothing but rave reviews so far. We just wanted to get your perspective of it so far. Talk about how you feel about the first, really, I guess not quite half of the season, but you can, if you throw the classic in there halfway through the season, yeah. um, you know, and just see how things are going for you and what, and what the, uh, the vibe is out there. Man, it's good. I'll just say before I forget, the in-house vibe is great down there. Uh, we had a meeting last Wednesday or Thursday for, for about 45 minutes to an hour with Chris Bowes, the sales team, GL, and a couple of others. And, um, you know, they're, they're ecstatic over, you know, the, the publicity that, that you all are giving it after you fish it, before you fish it and everything like that. And I think a lot of it, like Ryan has touched on a few times is the website's doing a good job. Mark Cisneros, big worm, getting us out there and publicizing it. Um, getting a lot of people coming up and, you know, asking about anglers now, like, like my boat buddies here on Lake Chickamauga, they mentioned an angler now from a Bassmaster tournament and then, uh, getting, getting on the elite feed a couple of weeks ago on Sunday for a little bit, you know, uh, Zona and them talking a little bit about the kayaking. I think that'll help some buzz. It's just organic stuff that we all talked about last year when we figured out I was going to step in and start working for them. It's just, you know, some of those things have taken a little while to get rolling, but uh, it's because, you know, I just had to find my bearings, but now we'll start plugging and playing those little things and uh, they're happy with it. They're, they're ecstatic with the attendance. Uh, they were just pleased. You know, we only had 26 or 27 that qualified for the championship that actually didn't get to travel and make it. So that was pretty huge there for them. Um, and just, you know, continue. We're already starting to work on the 24 schedule. Uh, obviously, I'll work with AJ and Hobie. We'll try to deconflict. And I'd like to spread every tournament we could out by about three weeks. If we can do that, then I think that'll help everybody, you know, pocketbook, recoup a little bit of dollars so they can commit to the next one. So, Josh Evans throwing in those Potomac plugs up there trying to, yeah. trying to get you to slide I, up that way. 
I listened to that last podcast. So, uh, <laughs> he's already he's, thrown it in it. this yeah. one. Yeah, he's ready to go, boy. Yeah, people, he copied and campaign. pasted that at lunch. Yeah, he, he topped that one up, put it in the copy on the clipboard at lunch today so he wouldn't forget it. Yeah, I promised myself, Steve, I would not campaign for Arkansas while we were on this live show tonight. You know, I'm always trying to slide you, slide Jeff. something in there. We really so. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a firm believer of that. I'm not going to do this, but by saying that, I literally just did. So you did a good job. That's good right. Job. That's that was kind of a yeah. passive aggressive way of still getting it in there, Steve. That's what that was. I like yeah. it. I like it. We're we're trying to move on to greener pastures, Jeff. I know. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, it's all it's all right. It's all good. So um, next next on the docket is PK. What's that? That one is looking like it's probably going to be a slugfest. Hopefully there's not a torrential downpour and Mark Pendergraft's spot doesn't produce like it did last time we were out there. Hey, I bet you as soon as a drop of water hits and starts raining, people will be right there looking for him. Though He'll have a lot of company there. I bet this. Oh yeah. Will. There's, there's a lot of publicity yeah. on that one for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. I love, I love watching the footage. He gets excited and I like the, the stuff they're coming out with now. On Old Town, they do a great job publicizing and producing these anglers out there. So they do a good job there. Pendergraft just dropped a video earlier. I, I was poking fun at him, man. He had a little, uh, a little leash phone leash video. <laughs> he ain't like never that. not never no going to lose the phone again. No, 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 no. I love Marky Mark. Golly, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, he does a good job, man. I, I like I like watching him on there. He does a good job. He can with it can we get him a paddle and a paddle leash, maybe, in case of emergency in the future? No. No. Nope. no. Let's nope. get him a wooden oar, <laughs> a wooden oar and set him free. So, I, he yeah. needs uh, several uh, PFD sponsors as much as he spends time outside of his boat in the water. I think that would be a good investment for Mark. Bless him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're excited about it. You know, it's uh, I think we're at like 45 or 50 right now with – Two weeks left to go, a full two weeks of registration. You know, the 26th is the deadline to register and practice will start the tw Saturday, the 27th at daylight. And you can, uh, or I think I actually put a 6 a.m. or something like that time on it. But that'll pretty How much many get kayak you, so. anglers are in Texas? Like eight 800,000 or something? I mean, they should it's be probably able it. to fill yeah. that one up. We should have about, about 950 to 1,000 in this one probably, I guess. But uh, uh no, I'll, uh, I'll be happy with – I'm awful. I'm awful. Every tournament so far this year, I've been way off on the numbers. So, yes, I quit even guessing. So, we yeah. may get 120 on this one. 237. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sheesh. Hey, so, Steve, does bass differentiate when an angler signs up for a membership between the kayak and, and non-kayak? Or is it just a bass membership? No, if you got your bass membership, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't yeah. know. You got Tony X. The, yeah, Attorney uh -huh. X has that map where they had like members from each state. I didn't know if there's a way to differentiate how many kayak folks from each state for bass or not. Yeah. Maybe no, something um, to look and, into there. Yeah. And then same way with Bass Nation. You join Bass Nation on a boat, then you're you're in in every other state. With Bass Nation, there's only the one thirty dollar membership fee. So if you join it in Tennessee, then you can fish Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, North Carolina, wherever has one. Only thing you have to do is like say, um, South Carolina has a, a $20 dues for their state dues that they use to run their trail series. Uh, the kayakers keep that $20 and they use it for a budget. So you just got to pay that extra 20 bucks to fish their events. And then you get all their points and stuff like that. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just wondered if there's a way to, like I said, track the number of kayak anglers per state. Cause that's a cool sort of competition to have. I think back when Dwayne used yeah. to throw that up, we'd always kind of look at that and Tennessee and Texas seem to dominate back then i hadn't seen him do that in a while back in the good old days yeah 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 we'll be able to do that pretty good because something i learned pretty quick is those ladies in the office at bass back there they're pretty pretty quick with an excel sheet so the it doesn't take them long yeah i'm talking about stuff that i'll sit here for three weeks working on and, and cross-eyed and headache they're just like 20 minutes later they've got it and it's all it's because nice you're out in the garage sorting tackle you sort of tackle <laughs> to 4 a.m that's why <laughs> man, man, yeah I don't know how that happened. Started at 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. Sun's coming up. And the guy across the street from me is a foreman at the railroad. And he come out and he said, hey, man, what are you doing? I was like, well, time got away from me, I guess. So, yeah. so. Well, we've got a bunch of people campaigning. we got folks saying, bring it to the Northeast. Go to the legendary Okaboji, which is some Iowa lake that is now better than all lakes, from what I understand. Um, people campaigning all through there. But I, I wanted to ask you, Steve, so far – 
What's been the biggest surprise for you so far as you've taken this new journey with bass? Not that I didn't expect it, but the, the ability to listen to the feedback and kind of help us cater to what, to what we all hear, you know, the anglers want, you know, and, and much like uh, the a situation we'll probably talk about here in just a little bit with something that happened in the nation recently, um, you know, you, not everything that sounds good is, is what should actually happen, you know, and, and not everybody has that kind of insight to, to figure that stuff out, you know, because a lot of things sound really good, but as soon as you start trying to do something, it, you can quickly see that it's not the best thing. And, and part of that is kind of like what we mentioned, you know, I, I made a big, uh, Oh, when we were doing the communication stuff and just kind of went, I went a little too, you know, literal in some things because it sounded like you know rules are rules you need to make them and it, it, this is a you know we're trying to grow these two elite and pro level series things and so uh but that that was the biggest thing so far on that side of it now as far as the kayakers so far it's been the fishing i mean we the registrations we we have very little issues you know there's some people obviously that work that are going to be late um on the water i think we probably had uh, Hartwell. We had a, a gentleman. It was his first first tournaments, and and it's sad to say he had he probably had a top ten limit, but he had the identifier wrapped around every fish. One fish he had upside down. A couple he had turned the wrong way, and I, I tried to call him several times and said, "Buddy," but he he you know of course he was angry, but he understood, you know. And I said, "Man, you know, there's videos that we watch, and there's meetings and rules and downloadable stuff." So. But uh, so far, I mean, it's, I think, you know, because all our grassroots and stuff are so strong across the country, we're not having, you know, uh-ohs from fish submissions and things like that. And uh, Just the, the support of it, man, people coming up and, and, you know, we can all put on a $250 uh, entry fee tournament and it'd be decently successful. But to hear people grateful that we're putting them in a Bassmaster tournament of some sort, it, it just, that's really surprised me. Uh, how many people that matters to and uh you know it's a blessing to be a part of it and and i won't forget that it means as much as it does to you guys so it helps me uh, look at it in that manner it helps me stay motivated and uh, a little tighter on the x's and o's when i need to be too yeah ryan and i talked about that on here before i think at least me underestimated the importance of that shield to people yeah you know what I mean? I mean, I know it's a cool thing, and I've, like all of us, we've seen Bassmaster for years, but I didn't equate the two as the same thing. But it, but it carries a lot of weight, a lot of street cred, doesn't it, Steve? Yeah, man. There's so many people that fish the federations in in that's the Bass Nation, what I call the Bass Nation. Everybody, everybody else calls it federations. Jay will say that on the Kentucky when he and his dad fished when he gets on here. But yeah, there's so many people that grew up fishing those those local federation events um so that they could make it to the state championship to try to make it to the classic and and the fact that the the working man and woman can do that um you know i think that that always was a dream for for the boaters to be able to do that and now there's a lot of kayakers that came from that world and we're seeing a lot of new ones come from the boat world too i mean had uh, i would without overestimating it, at least a dozen so far in the first two trail events to get combined about a dozen people that say they haven't gotten their boat out of the garage in two years since they got a kayak, you know? So uh, I've got a boat for sorry. To, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry to Phoenix, but I'm glad we're, we're selling kayaks for people. So, uh -huh. and that's another thing is, you know, having sponsor support's huge, you know, I mean, you know, you know, Dakota Lithium and Motor Guide and Yamaha Rightwaters are our sponsors this year. And, you know, and it's uh, it's it's not easy. Everybody, you guys are in the industry. These sponsor dollars are drying up. It, it's really hard to come by. Um, you know, the the free social media advertising is is real and they see it. So, you know, you got to be creative on showing them what return you can bring to them. And that's by, in my opinion, that's engagement. You know, that's how our mine and ryan's teams and staffs and stuff we've always been a part of are successful is that we're you know we're in the messages when people when we see a need 
And part of that comes from a genuine, we want to help you out, you know, so that you can have fun with your life and get on the water. And then the other is, is a, a, an asserted effort to understand that, man, you, you gotta, I mean, he's in medical sales. That's as cutthroat as it gets. You gotta be hardcore and go after it because it's not just going to come to you. Gotta have the hustle, man. That's right. And I love hustling. I love it. No matter what. I mean, if it's, if it's paper clips or rocks, man, we're going to hustle it. I like it. So. That's the truth. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. What do you, what's, what do you think the, the, closing portion of the season is looking like with with lacrosse and susky what's your take on that uh i, I would like this one i would like to make 150 out of this one mm -hmm. uh being texas i know it could easily be 200 but you know like we we discussed once before you know kids are out of school graduations are happening it's wedding season i'm going to one sunday i love it i'm excited i love weddings um it's uh it's hard now now's the time where your family life kicks in so that's going to hurt all of us across the board i believe i think lacrosse is going to surprise me out of all of them i just feel like that's the one where these this this texas event could be geographically too far for some to travel i feel you're paying northeast anglers i understand that uh, but texas has enough geography with arkansas and louisiana and the other states around it to fill out a very good tournament limit which is what they are not every tournament's going to have 85 travel anglers from you know 17 hours away uh, but lacrosse has a concentrated effort of anglers too. Uh, it's one that that a lot of people do like to travel to because it's a, a, a easier fishery to fish as far as like you're not compete competing against a bunch of big wake boats and sea dews. I think, um, and then you know uh, Susquehanna, Susquehanna. I think I kind of feel like knock on wood. I, I, I and it's what it's turning into me. I feel like people are looking at Susquehanna as a blowout party to end the season. It's a yeah. tournament. It's a tournament, mind you. But I think it'll be like Gunnersville, where everybody just showed up and they were just excited to be there. And we're still and and by the way, we're gonna fish for thirteen thousand dollars, you know. And yeah. I think uh so I think that's uh I, I think I really do think we'll end the end the season on a pretty good note with those two fisheries, especially. I like it. Keith Martin has messaged me and lets me know that my green screen sucks. So I guess he missed the introduction <laughs> to this episode. Where I mentioned my green screen sucks. So, Jeez. sorry. Why so hard? Hey, Keith, Keith's a key contributor to the kayak community here. He's, yeah, he's if the one anybody's that... going to bitch about everything, <laughs> it'll be Keith. Uh, top 10 for sure. I think I think he said we what is it? I, I'll I'll speak for him. The Keith bitching is Keith speaking up. <laughs> he's yeah. just yeah. letting you know, letting you, you know. So uh, he he did speak up. He mentioned you know about the uh, the elite stuff we'd all talked about getting us broadcast on live, and I sent that email at like ten nine forty or ten o'clock at night, and at eleven p.m. I had five emails back asking for graphics. So I got up out of bed, went to the living room, made the graphics, and got them the information uh, for the Possum Kingdom. I gave them the uh, Hartwell recap and. Uh, pictures and then i gave them last uh the joe McElroy pentagraph battle i gave them uh results and pictures all that too so they got all that up there which was pretty cool to see i like it very good very good yeah um steve I, you mentioned it a little bit earlier and we talked about what went down with the bass nation out there your way do you want to touch on that real quick about how what went down and how how you guys handled the the issue with this this angler and and their fish and to preface it it was the photo that was posted on kbn yeah i posted one of the big bass photos with this big yeah. bulging yellow eye that was one of the key indicators that kind of spawned this kind of investigation on I your thought part. he was just surprised right I didn't know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> surprised. he shocked himself to death <laughs> yeah, he was he's like how the hell did I get here that's what look at that jig happened. how did I get on KBN yeah. how did I get yeah. here yeah. It's was, it was crazy yeah. how did I get on this body of water but no uh you know it's uh highly I shouldn't have said that but anyway we um you know Georgia Bass Nation we had our Lake Lanier event and uh which we've got the anger of the year standings Carl Black Chevrolet uh Tom Kazmierski is our leader uh, we had our Lake Lanier event and, you know, some good fishing going on and we had some, some good large mouth caught and uh, Daniel Davis, the judge, reached out and said, hey, you know, we we got a fish here, you know, let's check it out. It's, it had a, a funky eye. And so we looked at it and, you know, the fish body's healthy. It's dark, which can that's that's another story there. But 
Um, but the uh, the fish it's a little more tan is a little more tan than the rest of the fish. In the yeah, stuff. yeah. And so, which turns out, you know, I had a, we a biologist spoke on that, and uh, and so, but the uh, the eyeball that that we looked at is is a, an eyeball that I've caught quite a few fish from. Most of them are buck bass when they get that big wild eye, that buck eye thing, you know, like they're 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 after the hunt, you know, trying to get shot a leg there. So. Um, <laughs> That's just what I kind of equated it to, you know, because as I said, I've caught fish like that. Uh, one of the fish in my yak attack tournament that I won over there, it had the, had a similar eye. So looking at it, I was like, Daniel, I don't, I don't feel like that fish is dead. I don't think there's enough there to say it's dead. And so it's, it's, it's an eye that has something done to it. So, uh, you know, obviously it's been preached and beat to death. Get a video, get a video when that kind of stuff happens. And so, um, the tournament goes on and the other submissions are coming in, you know, we're looking at them all. Um, and then there were more fish there that had, um, had some, uh, some pink distress marks, you know, that fish will get from boat rides, stuff like that. Not saying that angler did this, but just, you know what I'm saying? I'm giving you Being a description term. Yep. Yeah. We see that stress from low oxygen or heat or spawning, you know, it can happen from there. So, um, you have to take into account, you know, that when we make accusations, you know, you, you got to be, you know, careful with what you do. So um, the event proceeded and then I told Daniel, you know, you, you play this out, literally, you know, these fish look distressed. So we'll question this person about them. Um, and then so, you know, when you ask that, you know, it's obviously, you know, nothing was done wrong. So, you know, what can you prove? Nothing. So we move forward and I told Daniel, I said, let's just we're just sit still. And uh, we'll, we'll make the, the calls on Monday to see what we need to do here because, uh, you know, a couple of anglers filed a protest or just, you know, had, had questioned, which initiated me to start our investigation. And so uh, didn't get into it Sunday, you know, letting our presidents um, and everybody have their weekend. So Monday uh, was reached out to by you know a couple of anglers and another couple of TDs. You know, we had, uh, you know, the, the Queen City Club. We had a Hartwell event recently with them. Um, and then, you know, the, the, uh, the grassroots club fished with us on Saturday as well. So, um, you know, keeping in mind, you know, when I do things now, it's not just normal. I mean, I'm representing Bassmaster, even if I'm doing something for TBKA. I mean, it's, that's just what I have to do now. So I have to be careful publicly what we do and then make certain that, you know, we're not slandering someone that doesn't deserve it too, because just because you question someone doesn't mean that, you know, they did something wrong. It's just, we've got to get this cleared out. So, I spoke with Bassmaster. I spoke with our Georgia Bass Nation president and our Tennessee Bass Nation president as well. Explain the situation about these fish, the questions the anglers have, and above all else, the integrity of our trail series that we run. So um, I suggested I would like to question this angler officially, and they all agreed. So, you know, we worded it the way it needed to be. You know, these fish, you know, have signs of stress, and I understand stress can come from a, a number of different things, but um, we need to question you about this and, uh, you know, I explain the options to the angler. Uh, if you, what happens if you say yes and pass it, if you say no and fail it, and if you decline it. And so obviously, you know, everyone's nervous of polygraph tests. That's what they're there for is to uh, get a little act right and, and have some help you kind of, you know, watch yourself, to be honest with you, because I'd, I'd be scared to death to take one because I'm just nervous right anyway. Them, boy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just nervous anyway. So, uh, but I explained to the angler, you know, because, uh, you know, he said, well, how long do I have? And so I told him, you know, you got 24 hours to make a decision. And so he messaged back and uh, respectfully declined to take the test. And I had explained beforehand, one of those options was if you decline it, that's an admission of guilt. Um, you're not giving yourself the ability to clear your name. You're not helping us keep the integrity of the trail series and stuff. So you would be removed from the trail series and stripped of your standings and stripped of this Lake Lanier event, because that's the only thing we can work with is Lake Lanier, because that was the event we were within and uh, payout. You know, I've started waiting until Monday to do the payouts on a Saturday tournament. Bassmasters are waiting until Tuesday. How many, uh, how many Tuesdays? <laughs> uh at least 17 tuesdays before before payouts go sorry out. steve sorry it's a so, yeah, practice so we, in the uh, industry 
Jeff, 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 that crowd. All right. All right. So I got to get some acro. Whatever he's looking for. So, yeah, but we, um, so anyway, you know, the angler, you know, handled it the way they were supposed to as far as answering whatever I needed. Uh, but with the questions that we needed answered, that angler didn't provide us, you know, uh, evidence to be able to let them continue to fish. So they've been removed from uh, the Bass Nation series in Georgia. Uh, we, you know, took away all of their submissions for the year because they're gone. They don't get the AOI points. So now, you know, Andy Middleton is the official winner of the Hartwell event with his career day at 97 inches. And uh, oh, Josh Choi wins Lanier. Yeah, Josh Choi wins Lanier. So, uh, yeah. and that's that's what it was. And I mean, you know, you don't see you don't see a public statement or a bunch of outcry because again, as I just mentioned, you know, we, we have to do things professionally. And what I mentioned a little bit ago about when you're building tournament series and people want things done and they do make good sense, just like this, if, if an angler was caught cheating, you know, people feel like they deserve to be, you know, put on front street and everything. And that's, I won't disagree with that at all. But in this situation here, this angler was not caught cheating. This angler just declined to defend themselves or clear up the questions we had about what had happened. So, um, we, and, and with that being said, you know, you, you can form your own opinions of what happened. I have my own, I'm not going to share them, but as a tournament director, you know, he declined that polygraph. So he was removed from the standings and banned from the league. And, you know, there we go. we're going to keep people going in the comments. with it. People in the comments asking for his name. I don't even know what to do yeah. name is, to be honest, but people yeah. that were in the tournament or in the comments, he, you can put that in there, yeah. I guess, because I don't know who it is. But yeah. Uh, right. When you're when it, you run things, man, you gotta be careful throwing people's yeah, names yeah. out there like that because yeah. you get attacked to attached to slander or whatever. And furthermore, I mean, everyone deserves to understand because we don't want this person coming to another trail series. So I get that. There's a way to handle stuff like that, but to put it all out there to where it just gets beat around like a pinata, it's fun and we all like it. You know, we like getting pissed off and getting enraged and raising cane about yeah. stuff, but man, it's just not good. It don't look good on all of us. So I'm not partaking in it. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I just gave well, you all the, the official statement of it. And anybody that asked me publicly, I'll explain the same thing to them. And in the end, we took care of a situation that I feel like was one that had been happened uh, had been happening for some time. Uh, I've been given evi evidence or I've been given things that you can trace back to see some other things as well. And I don't like it. And I think in the end, uh, what needed to happen ended up happening. So I'm happy with it. I'm not completely happy with it, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay where we're at with it. So. Yeah. My main question is, once you catch that shot of leg, does your eye swelling go back down and the yellow fade away? Or is did I say that? I said, <laughs> oh, <golly." laughs> oh, that sounds like one of my sayings. Yeah, we're yeah, probably gonna keep that, that one. Well, we'll that'll, be on the that one Steve. that'll be on the Sorry, shorts feed later, Steve. Don't worry, it'll be on yeah. the shorts feed later. So, oh, shoot. There, that's we, awesome. there we go. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, you handled that bass pro, when bass pro create their eyeball can. You, Swell, okay, is that right? Got Late spawner, noted. Over there. Yeah. noted. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we don't want to keep you too long. We got Jay waiting here. We wanted to have you on and get a little bass update, but we do have some questions for you. I want to hit you with Ooh. before we let you get out. Well, here. We got a Tennessee Bass Nation May 27th coming up, too. If you don't mind me plugging that, no, no, plug it up, plug it up. Right yeah. Where's that May one? At? Yep, that's on Watts Bar. Ryan Lambert's Ooh. cash money's there. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, and then I, I tried to throw up the the uh. AOI standings right there. Tom sitting at sitting at yeah, top. That's for Georgia. There for you Georgia. Go. Just yeah, about what, perfect there. What was this one from? Georgia? Jesse? Take yeah, that right there the is Old Town is a yeah, Old Town's a Georgia Bass Nation sponsor. They mm -hmm. gave us a, a kayak to give away and twenty five hundred dollars cash. We give away two hundred and fifty oh. per tournament, and we're giving away twelve fifty in the state championship. That's split awesome. up amongst five people. So amazing. Amazing yeah. stuff, Old so Town. Thank Old you town. to Ryan Lilly and Old Town for getting all that going, man. It's uh, pedal power, do, baby. Uh, Prop power. Old Town has here. money. C2. Old Town's got yeah. that money, boy. Yeah, they come up off it, man. There ain't no sense of carrying around a big wallet. Just hurt your back. Ain't that right? Ain't that's that right? That's right. Old money. Yeah. Steve, you just full. I love. Out. I love Steve Sainz. Yeah. Just make we'll clip. He's like out. a. He's hey. like one of those old McDonald Farm C and Sainz. Like you just pull the handle, and you never know what kind of shit's about to come out. 
All right, we're gonna hit you. It's just lemonade. That's just lemonade too. All right, I'm gonna hit you with these questions rapid fire. Calvin Johnson on YouTube said, "Is there a difference in Bassmaster and Bass Nation membership?" Yes, sir. Bassmaster for your first year is fifteen dollars, and what that does is it lets you fish the Bassmaster Open Series events, the two hundred fifty dollars ones. The Bass Nation membership, you or the Bass Nation membership, you have to have the Bassmaster as well, but it's thirty dollars, and that lets you fish the state level stuff which can get you into your state championship will then qualify you for the Bassmaster championship, hopefully. Yeah. All right. And then Gene Bohannon says, if you're a Bass Lifetime member, are you covered? At least for part of that. You are, you are except for your Bass Nation dues. All right. So if you're going to fish the state stuff, there's an additional Bass Nation due associated Correct. with that. Yep. But if you want to fish Possum Kingdom, you're in. You're in the rest of them for the rest of your life. There you go. Uh, Adam Lyle says, when do you expect to drop the 24 schedule? Earlier than last year. <laughs> well, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> way my calendar I, set up is <laughs> four twenty four. Yeah. yeah, I should have the elite schedules because I want to make sure that we schedule around the elites and the opens at least, so that we can grow our online coverage. And then uh, as we work with it, I'll work with AJ so that we can deconflict and keep regions and stuff from crossing. And so uh, it's another thing Bassmaster's hugely supportive of. They said, you know. Uh, not only do do we have a great friendship, but AJ is a very professional minded person and we'll work around everything that we can because obviously we want both of our series to be super successful, but we also want everybody to be able to fish what they can. Even if it's not mine, I want it to be able to where you can fish the other and he's the same exact way. Yeah. Looks at the community more than he does himself a lot of times. So that's really good to have a partner like that in what we do here. That's what oh, you yeah. call it. All right, here's the last one. Uh, give us a clue as to what lake the 2024 20, championship will be on. Any Ooh, talks on that? It'll be pretty close to uh, where the classic will be, hopefully. Uh, I'm, I'm 99% sure that's what we're going to roll with. You all have discussed it a little bit. So uh, that lake, you don't expect it very quickly, but because I'm going to take my time. I already talked to the, talk to the people that live out there. I want to make sure that we get, you know, the best lake that's out there because I don't live there. I listen to you all, and and I just right. depend on what you guys say. And, you heard, uh, so you heard it here first, Steve. Watchita is in the lead right now. Beaver Lake's Shit. not that far away, Steve. Right across the border, <laughs> not that far away. Everybody oh, can boy. stay at my house. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right. Yes, so, I'll stay at your house. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we appreciate Tourney X broadcasting our banner like they do to get us linked up. Uh, Sassy Dan and I are leaving the 27th. We're riding down. We're going to fish Bussy Break and Caney Creek on the way. Our good friend Jordan Lee suggested we go there, so we're going to spend three days there. I think Jamie Coase is going to drop in for a day or two. and uh, Just uh, just give us a shout, though, man. I hope all of you can come and fish that, that can. I man. like it. I like it. We appreciate it, Steve-O. Congrats, thank and thank you for what you're doing, brother, man. Give Jay a kiss for me. I will. You the man, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve Owens. He's a he's a gem. And we he got is. Jay Wallens. He is. Jay Wallens has been patiently waiting, listening to all those shenanigans. Is this Jay? This is Jay, supposedly. Jay, are you there? I am there. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you I... loud and clear, man. You still driving? Or you home yet? I'm almost home. Close. All right. All right. You got that knob Close creek enough. open yet? <laughs> oh man, I've been staring at it. <laughs> is it staring back at you? That's the real question. Yeah. yeah, it is that. Right. <laughs> oh man! So tell us a little bit about what we've got to expect here. We've seen some some hype posts. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Kentucky Lake's going to give us this weekend? Man, I tell you what, I I fished Kentucky Lake on Saturday and all day today, and the lakes. I say lakes. Barkley, in my opinion, is is struggling a little bit. I, I did not do very good on Barkley. Um, but the last bass boat tournament out there was one on Barkley. So, yeah, yeah kind, of, kind of hard to, to say that. But Them there's a lot to cover of, a little bit more water, though. They do. They do. They, they do the old running gun stuff. Um, I will say this, though, man. There's a lot of fish in the lake. I mean, and I don't mean carp. Like there's a lot say, of bass. Yeah. Okay. All right. There, there's <laughs> a lot of bass in the lake. Um, not every creek is loaded. There's some obviously that are better than others, but you know some of the areas I, I went to today. I mean, there's just a lot of 14 to 15 and a half inch fish. Um, every now and then you run into a 17, 18 incher, but uh, you know I think. I think you're going to see a little bit more limits than a lot of people are thinking. 
I like it. I like the sound of it. I, I, I just mean, don't know how big they're going to be, you know? I, what's it looking like timing wise? I mean, you think the bite's going to be pretty consistent for a lot of people, or do you think it's going to be kind of a funk? I know some of these lakes, Chickamauga, this past weekend, Chickamauga did okay, but the couple weeks before that, it was kind of in that post spawn funk where they're not out deep yet. They're just kind of scattered around. I mean, what are you thinking it's going to be like as far as uh, kind of the transition phase of the fish? They're definitely in transition right now. Uh, I'm seeing a ton of fry and there's some areas where you'll go through a stretch of bank and you'll get maybe two, three bites real quick. And then you go for long periods of time without a bite. Um, they are, they do seem to be a little bit scattered. Um, but for, I'll just throw this out there. I probably shouldn't, but I'm catching a lot of fish shallow. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you can flip bushes, um, there's not a whole lot of bank grass that I've been seeing. You know, I love fishing that water willow, um, and the water willows just not quite come in yet. Um, but the, but the lake's up to like 360, uh, the, the water's up. And so I think as long as the water continues to come up, I think the fishing's going to stay pretty consistent, uh, and consistently pretty good. I mean, if you get it in front of them, they're eating, okay. um, I did see I did see a bass on the bed today. Wow. Uh, I did. Uh, I only saw it's the only fish I've seen in two days on Kentucky Lake on the bed, uh, and I I threw a cinco at it, and my cinco barely touched the water, and that fish had it immediately. Sounds so, like a good fish. Yeah, it was a uh, it was eighteen incher. Uh, it was, it was a solid girl. fish. Sweet girl. Yeah, but uh, I am seeing some carp. Um, but it's nothing like what it used to be instead of seeing just wall to wall, you know, if you run a side scan down those, you know, those bays three, four years ago, it was just, you couldn't throw a bait out without rolling it across the back of a car. And I'd go, I'd go as far as about seven months ago. <laughs> well, yeah, I understand. But what I'm seeing the last few days out there, I'm seeing groups of like five and six. And Instead there's just little pods. 6, exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. they're around, you know, they're still, if you, uh, you know, I'm, of course I'm using my Newport motor and if you, you fire up your motor and all of a sudden you spook about 30 of them that are up on the surface and, oh, yeah. you know, that that's still going on. Um, but there's a lot of bait. There's a lot of bait in the lake. Um, there, there's little emerald shiners. I saw a school of gizzard shad today. Um, I'm every now and then you'll see a, a bait ball and you know, gosh, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw a bait ball on Kentucky Lake on my graph. Um, so, you know, it's, it's improving. That's what I'll say. I'll say yeah. Kentucky Lake is improving. Do you um, think it's, it's still going to affect the performance with the boundaries, uh, being at, you know, Paris and above? Yes. Yes. Because, you know, I think we all know that, some of those creeks in the south that are that are spring fed, uh, close to where Tennessee uh, deposits those Florida strain bass, those creeks, you know, we all know about them without naming them, but like th those creeks are just anomalies in the whole Kentucky Lake system. Mm -hmm. And with those not in the boundaries, um, I'll be honest with you, and I haven't been able to do it. But if a person could get on five smallmouth each day, they could absolutely run away with this tournament. I think um, that's going to be the trick, though. I mean, there are a lot of, of trophy class smallmouth, but to get five of them in a day. I mean, it, we saw yeah. it in our state championship, but that was a two-day tournament, best five. And I still think he had one largemouth on his stringer, but he had four, you know, healthy yeah. adult you know, 18 to 21 inch smallmouth. So yeah. I now agree. those are, there's plenty of those out there. And from what I understand, those bass boat guys that are catching them really good, they are having to run and gun a lot. You know, they're, they're point hopping, you know, they're, they're dropping that forward facing sonar. And if, if, you know, they might pick off one or two smallmouth off a point and then they're running to another one. Uh, that's hard to do in a kayak. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've lucked into a couple decent smallmouth the last few times out there, um, but I have not been able to unlock the code to just catch five, six, seven, eight smallmouth in a day. 
Uh, I just haven't quite been able to figure that out. Do you think so, those fish are more scattered on Kentucky Lake instead of kind of, you know, grouped up or packed up? Like, if you look at Kentucky Lake, there's so many miles of rocky yeah. shoreline and points. I feel like they're just not – they don't have to be as concentrated as some other lakes where they're just limited to, like, one section of the lake. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's no question they're spread out. Um, the, the good news is there's a lot of them. Um, but they are spread out. Uh, my understanding, you know, I was reading the fishing reports online from Brandon Hunter and a lot of those guys. And what they were saying was that two, three weeks ago, there was a big wave of smallmouth that came up to spawn for that Toyota series. And they just kind of had a perfect storm mm -hmm. of smallmouth coming up to spawn. And if, if you've ever fished for smallmouth during the spawn, they're idiots. They are stupid, wow. stupid wow. fish. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they, Jesus. They are. They're dumb. Oh, They're dumb. Um, it's rude. And you can just catch them. You can slay them. And I think, um, I think that that party is over. Um, so I think the smallmouth bite could get a little bit tougher. Uh, but I tell you this: whoever wins this tournament, they're going to have some some big smallmouth in their limit. It may not be all smallmouth, but there'll be one or two kicker uh, smallmouth mixed in the bag. I, I have no doubts about that. What what about the lake? What's you said? There's bait showing up. You know, you hadn't seen yeah. bait in a long time. What, what's changing? Because I mean, I, I have a hard time believing they've got a handle on those carp, or do they have a handle on them? What's what's changing there? It's hard to say that they do have a handle on it, but it's just it's improved. Um, one of the biggest things that if you if you listen to some of the biologists around here, the carp do get a lot of blame and rightfully so for the, for the downturn in, in fishing productivity out there. But um, what really happened was between like 2015 to like 2018, maybe even 2019, there were terrible, terrible spawn uh, years. And what was happening was we would get these high water events early in the season, like late March, early April, and it would get real warm and the water would come up and all those fish would run to the banks and spawn. And then the TVA, because it was ahead of schedule, uh, would lower the lake back down to winter pool and leave all those beds and all those eggs high and dry. And that happened like three, four years in a row. And then over the last four or five years, uh, we've had really, really good spawns. And we're starting to reap the benefits of some of those good spawns. And I have to say this year, I think is another bumper year uh, for the spawn because I have never seen so many bass fry on Kentucky Lake than what I saw the last couple of days. There are fry everywhere. Um, there's not, a, there's not necessarily fry garters everywhere. Uh, but if you see fry, I mean, there's obviously bass in the area. Um, so the, the spawn classes are getting better and better. Um, Do you think the, the gross reduction in the number of tournaments being held on Kentucky Lake is partly responsible for the lake coming back? Uh, rephrase, do you think it was overfished before? Do you think that was a big contributing mm, factor in the downturn of the lake? I don't know that it was because Kentucky Lake was getting tremendous amounts of pressure from – I mean, the early 90s, you know, hardcore tournament pressure from the early 90s all the way up to, you know, 2015, 2016. And the weights were always consistent for, for decades. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, it's such a big waterway. There's the, the population of fish was so, so big. I don't, I don't think that it was overfished. Um, I just think that those few years where I, I don't, I think it was a perfect storm of carp, terrible spawn classes. Um, and maybe some, maybe even some water quality issues with some of those floods and was it, you know, was high it, water was, events. Was it Kentucky Lake where we were seeing pictures of all the fish kills post tournament where they were just floating up on the bank? Where was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah it oh, was. Yeah. And that, yeah. that was kind of where I was going with that. Like those yeah. ledge bites, you know, these guys are out there and they're catching the big, the big spawners out of these tools and they're floating dead everywhere. Like yeah. I, I, 
in my head, I have to think that somehow that was a factor, at least in the trophy class of the fish, maybe not the, you know, 15 to 17 inch fish, but well, but you're, you're, you're right about fish. that. The, and those big fish are the ones that get stressed the most and end up having the highest mortality. They get big eyes and tans. They skin. get, <laughs> that's right. They get, they get a little swollen. Yeah. And, uh, I'm looking for a shot yeah. of leg out there. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I recall, um, I believe it, and I, I don't mean to throw them under the bus. It's not just them, but that Triton's uh, Triton boats owners tournament. Yeah. Um, they always had that in mid June. Um, and, and the water, you know, you're looking at 80 degree water and it was just really stressful. That was the one out of Paris. Wasn't it? it was. Yeah. yeah they'd have you know, that, and they they'd always had, had 200 boats. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ever think in the South, I, I mean, it's probably never would happen, but you know, up North, they have these different seasons where you're not even allowed to tournament fish or fish for certain fish. Uh, yeah. You think that would ever happen down in the South, Southeast? On no. Some challenge lakes. No way in hell. No. We eat no. and live, brother. I mean, the if if you ever want to have a, like a, a reenactment of the Civil War, <laughs> go tell, go tell Alabama and Tennessee boys they can't fish during the spawn. Yeah, yeah, that ain't that ain't gonna go that, well. It ain't gonna fly. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not advocating like for that. Fish. Yeah, I'm not advocating <laughs> for that. I'm just saying. I've seen a few posts in a few different places talking about that, and I just don't. Yeah, I, just don't know. I don't think it. Obviously, I don't think it would. It would hurt. Um, but I don't necessarily think that tournaments. Uh, with the tournament anglers catch such a small percentage of the bass that live in a lake. I don't know how big of an impact it really has. Randy Blockett would say it's a live scope getting them all. So David, yeah. Morris, David Morris made a good comment. I've actually suggested this to Dennis Tumlin uh, for summertime, especially the bigger boat tournaments going to a CPR format uh, yes. for those, those, you know, hot summer ledge tournaments just to try to keep from killing so many of the, of the spawners. Totally agree. Totally agree. I think we obviously have the technology to do it. Um, you know, let's protect our resources. I mean, you want to have weigh-ins during the spring, that's fine. But as soon as June hits, you know, June through September, let's, let's do CPR. Yep. Yeah. They used to, people used to do paper tournaments, you know, before now you don't have to mess with any of that. It's just tourney X or whatever. Exactly. You know, yeah. Right. No, we, we have the technology and the, the way to do it. It's just, you, it's hard to get these bass boat guys out of the weight mentality. You know, they're all worried about, you know, the, the weights and they, they yeah. don't understand that it doesn't really matter. Like I, if I you're doing inches Bistino. or weight, it, length matters. Bistano does. They, when we were down there fishing Caddo a, a few years ago, they on Bistano, they had to video them weighing the fish. And that was their, that was their way in for their bass. Hey, that, that works too. I mean, if you have everybody using the same scales and you know, you, you could definitely do that. Yeah, I think that's what they they handed out. They had whatever it was, like fifty calibrated scales, whatever. Right. But then you go out and video, and and you know, oh, you could cheat, you could put lead weights in their ass, whatever. But you can cheat, like I, as we just discussed earlier. <laughs> like, yeah, you can cheat I mean, doing anything. Like, there's no, exactly there's right. no way to make make fishing cheater proof there's no anytime right. you met anytime that's mentioned all i think of is, is hearing that echo there's weights in them damn fish from the <laughs> i heard that i was driving to the lake this morning i heard that on the news because they were talking about uh they're talking about the guys getting sentenced for that and of course they had to play it and we got weights and fish <laughs> i was just like god bless <laughs> Never. I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna put weights in my fish uh this weekend actually <laughs> I don't know I, why. You know, uh, it won't it won't make it, it won't make it any longer. I just wanted to see if if they would go in. I don't know. <laughs> Keep them on the board, Ryan. Guys, so gonna you know get them a shot of leg and a weight and go on down the road with it. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> Steve just added to the. Uh, Golly, do you our, have any fun sayings, Jay, on deck? Do you have anything tuned up for us that we might want to write down here? Oh later? man, <laughs> you know. I, What's your best Kentucky I, knee slapper you got pinned up there? <laughs> Doesn't have to be PG. We're to, good here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't have anything on deck for you. I can't That's compete right. with Stevo. <laughs> no one can. Lord have mercy. No one uh, can. Not when I'm sober, anyway. <laughs> I told you to drink that Knob Creek on the way home. Yeah, I know. I'm saving it. 
But so, uh, no, I, I'll tell you. Off the road. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But no, uh, just just to give you a quick rundown, Kentucky Lake. There's Shad Fry, or there's uh, there's Emerald Shiners. There's Fry. There's Shad. You can fish shallow. You can go out and fish deep stuff. Uh, fish are kind of. I'm catching fish a little bit of everywhere. Honestly, I know that's kind of vague, but you know you can really target your strength right now because there's there's fish up shallow and there's fish transitioning out to some of the deeper stuff. So um, that's pretty much the game. And don't be surprised if you run into a big 19, 20 inch smallmouth because they are, gonna, are around. Are, are you going to win this one, Jay? Well, I don't know. I, I doubt it. I, I don't know what it's going to take. Uh, I'll say this, the last two days I've been out there fishing, my best five has been 85 inches the other day, and I think today I had 83. So, I mean, it's not it's not great, you know what I mean? But I also wasn't fishing too hard either. So, But two days of it, that, on, I mean, say. traditionally speaking, you know, especially the past few years, two days of 85 inches on Kentucky Lake is going to cash you a check. Period. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I think if I do what I did the last uh, couple days out there, I think I'm in check range for sure. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know about winning it, though. I, I don't know. I still think if somebody if somebody can get those smallmouth figured out, I'm telling you, somebody could absolutely run away with it. You could have 96, 97 inches a day if you can figure it out. Whoa. Jeff Sherwood was asking, what do you think it'll take? You think there's going to be one, out, one outlier that's going to be run away with it out there? Mm. no I, I think it's possible i just don't know the, I'll, I'll be honest with you i think the only person that could figure him out with the live scope because he's so good at it would be ewing god and damn we got Todd know, right there yeah. right there on time in the comments was todd boy he was real yeah. fire. he'll be out there but, doing something goofy <laughs> uh, you know he might be able to figure those smallmouth out with that live scope i don't know i don't know if he'll get on the right the right stuff of where, you know, if he can find enough of them, that's the key is finding enough yeah. of them. Well, we'll find out uh, next Monday. We'll talk to him about it. <laughs> yeah. But here's what I think. Here's what I think will happen. I think somebody will have 91, 92 on the first day. And then I think they'll follow it up with like an 86 or so and win it with that. Just hang on. Yeah. Yep, 92 the first day and 86 or so the second. That's my that's my call. Right, Brian, we got to start this Calcutta or whatever ASAP because we're we making some bank right here. On, yeah, on I love the Cal I love the Calcutta idea. I grew up playing golf with Calcuttas, and I always thought it could translate to fishing pretty well. Let's yeah. do it. We had not been to jail for gambling yet, so no, yeah, on. we got to break some laws. Uh, Arkansas has got right. casinos now, so maybe I can do it from here. Let's call it. <laughs> we can just, you know, you're allowed to do it in Kentucky as long as you just call it horse racing. Yeah. yeah, I got Very I got true. some friends over on the res. They can we can Shawna We can euthanize somebody at the at the boat ramp and just call it Churchill Downs, and they don't care. It's all legal. Can we wow. vote on who we euthanize? Can we just euthanize the boat? <laughs> sure. Boat? Yeah. 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 Oh wow. Boy. Yeah, things are out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it happens. It's this a good way to end it, boys. Matt's Apollo, yep. are you watching? What do we need to do? What's our next step? Delete. <laughs> <laughs> delete tonight's episode oh geez yeah uh any more questions in here let's see oh there was one th this was to ryan but jay you can comment too so what do you know about the fish dying on chick and nickajack there's some sort of virus going around on Tennessee chick has a big fish kill going on right now um it started out as mainly catfish and now it's it's more game fish as well there's a lot of crappie bluegill and largemouth big largemouth turning up yeah. with this white kind of fungus looking thing on them nobody mm. i mean i haven't heard jay have you heard uh what may be the cause of it i've seen the pictures the, and reports and stuff but it's the only bad. thing that i read is that they're saying that where we haven't had as much rain there's not as much water moving through the system mm -hmm. and it's getting a little bit stagnant i know today on kentucky lake there was very little current out there uh and the lake is up I suspect that they're they're holding back the Tennessee and Cumberland rivers. They're not letting as much water through the system because they've got so much snow runoff coming from uh, the Midwest on the Mississippi River. They've got, I think they're just trying to manage all that water. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't think there's as much water moving through the system. And it could it could just be an oxygen issue. I, I really don't know. 
Yeah, Bubba, Bubba Jones on Facebook is uh, calling it an STD of some sort. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it could be. <laughs> It could be herpes. Or Bubba, wears, Bubba wears socks with his chacos or something, though, right? So we don't. I don't know how much. I don't legend. know how much we need to take advice on leg from old legend. Bubba Jones. Bubba's legend. I don't know if if he's wearing socks with chacos, he probably knows all about STDs. So it's <laughs> oh, possible. There we go. There we go. You know you had it in you, Jay. There we go. All right, uh, well. Corey Racer. Yes, we already talked about the North Carolina deal tonight. We did. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, so go back and watch that later. But don't leave yet. We're going to do a giveaway here shortly. So, yeah, Crocs and Socks, Bubba. You the man. I love it. Boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we wanted to get your insight, Jay, what you thought about Kentucky Lake, where you, the status of the lake, and, of course, you gave us the juice. Like Jay Wallen yep, does. it's not dead. Juicy it's Jay, not baby. dead. It's on life support, but it's not dead. <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. chance. Mark Menendez right. is making it happen. He did it. He's bringing it back. I'm going to slide up there Wednesday and wait on Jeff. That's it. I'll be there Thursday. All right. Thursday late. All right, Jay, we're going to do this giveaway. You want to slide out here? I know yes, you're sir. Almost, almost home. We appreciate you, sir, as always. One of our favorite guests here. So Thank you, Jay Bird. Thanks. Thank you for having me, fellas. There we go, everybody. Jay Wallen. Love that guy. Can't be in A wealth of knowledge. Wealth of knowledge. I'm telling you. All right, Ryan. It's that time. It's giveaway it. time. Let's do it. Let's give it a great show tonight. Away. Let's give away some string, you know. Show tonight. We're giving away some cigar. You already know what that's going to be. Hashtag dun, 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 cigar. Dun. I think I spelled it right. There's already 11 you entries did. for that because people were throwing this in earlier. They guesstimated what I was going to put as the word. <laughs> You're so predictable. I know. Yeah. Uh, Richard Breed, Breedu? Right out. I don't know. How do you say that? Oh, yeah. Right? I don't know. He said, thoughts on the KBF Lake George this weekend, which is... I haven't I'm, thought about it yet, brother. I haven't thought about it yet. It's <laughs> low, low entries. Low entries up there so far. I don't know. Richard, what do you think they're going to get to? I think it's it's looking pretty uh, meager right now. So. Should be able to should be able to make that payment on time. Yeah. Well, you, you would think. Uh, we got some hashtags flying in. Casual Bass Guys says, Richard, he will be there. So there you go. Mark one more okay. up for the, for the team, Richard. I like it. Uh, let's see if I can throw this up where you guys can see the word hashtag cigar in the comments for a chance to win. Make sure you actually shared the Facebook oh, and liked and commented God. on YouTube. I trust y'all very much, but I don't trust some of y'all. So trust, but verify. Isn't that what they say, Ray? I trust four of y'all and they were all on the podcast tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> we got to sort on. through the rest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Entries are coming in. We got 62 entries. We got 120 people watching, or 113, 114 now watching. That's so crazy, them, Jeff. Why do 114 people even pay attention to this stuff? I honestly? don't know, man. I don't know. Nobody on Twitch yet. We're gonna hold on for you gamers over there. On <laughs> Nobody Twitch. on Twitch. Damn it, Twitch. I'm Come gonna on. Google what Twitch is so we can crack this code. Yeah, uh, I'll ask my son. Stream some stuff on Twitch. One of them does. I'll really see, what, see if there's a secret. Was he stream over there? Uh. Video game stuff, like okay. NBA 2K and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, we can go live on Tic Tac. You want to start streaming to Tic Tac? Yeah, you got that ability, don't you? I got you, dog. I'm... Yeah, give me the stream key. I'm the wizard. Let's do that. Give me the stream key. We'll go over there next week. Okay, the, deal. The KBN uh, Tic Tac, I have not been very consistent with posting on it, so I don't have enough subs or whatever you call them over there, followers, to go live on that KBN Tic Tac. All right, we'll do that. Uh, Chris Murphy's <laughs> hashtag Twitch. Uh, Chris going to win a uh, free membership to Twitch, whatever, whatever that is. Once we figure it out, buddy, we're going to hook you up. Bobby there. Tinker's heading to Twitch to watch next time. He's going to be our first Twitch viewer. Yeah, he would. He Bobby would. feels like he'd be a Twitch guy. No offense. Bobby. He's pro He probably Twitches a little bit every now and then, if you know yeah. what I mean. All right, here we go. Remember, guys, there's going to be a dramatic pause. So if you're the guy that gets left on, on uh, <sighs> the last tick, I'm sorry. Boy. This anticipation gets here me we every time. We're doing it. I hope it's not Dell again. He'll probably come find me. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Appreciate y'all watching tonight. That was a great show. <laughs> Casual bass guy, it was you this time. You got <laughs> the brief pause and then Nick. <laughs> Last man Nick, out. Wegman or Wegman. Either way, if I mispronounce it, I'm sorry. Nick, I'm whichever Facebook. one you want to be, uh, DM us your shipping address, and I will pass it off to Seagar and get your prize in the mail, my friend. Elvis Lee, your prize from last week has been shipped. I hope it arrives to you soon. Yep. Yeah, Dale, we kept you even out of the, the rotation this time, Dale. So you're good, my friend. Great show, Ryan. Yep. I like it. I like it. Good job. I am going to 
do a couple quotes and go to bed. I'm being such a good boy this week till we get to Kentucky Lake. I feel you. Are I you bringing bring the cornhole boards, Jeff? Uh, do I need to bring the boards and the bags this time around? I would appreciate it, but see, we can see. see. Can we do. can negotiate. I have my boards laid out by the house if I need to throw them in the truck. I can, I see if if I can anybody wants to too. throw cornhole, uh, 100 bucks a game, find me or Jeff. Bring cash or PayPal. Oh, but me and Ryan are on the same team. On so the same team. <laughs> All right, y'all. See y'all. Later. Later.